Hi guys. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Python lists. And uh, here we have two samples of lists. My first list contains just numbers, integers, whereas my second list contains numbers and strings. And the numbers themselves, they are basically we have integers and floats as well. So you can see uh, lists can be of a single type or multiple mixed type. Uh, of elements. Now, what is a list? A list is basically a series of elements bound by one variable. Um, obviously, I could, instead of using lists, I could have discrete variables, each containing one value. But as we shall see, uh, lists give you huge advantages versus you know having each element in a, in a separate variable um, obviously there's got to be some kind of relationship between the elements to put them in a list they're not just any random elements for instance they, they could be you know stuff you get out of a database or they could be like uh, you know the the incomes you've made over the years or whatever so it's, it's got to be some sort of relationship between them. Um, now, first thing is that how do I call individual elements of my list? Let's call it, let's create a variable x, y, z. And if I need, if I need to call um, for instance, the 547, well, I need to know in what position is it and a list is always ordered in in certain in a in a certain way and my first list is always going to be ordered like this unless you change something in that list so and the ordering takes place from here this is zero one two three so if i need the five four seven i'd get i need to get a call the list with index three that means that and don't forget lists always start with zero so zero one two three so this is three and if i print xyz then i would get that five four seven and there you go and if i use index zero then i would have the one two three so this is how you access individual elements in a list and um, you can also access a range of indices for instance if i need to i need the first three elements so zero one two so I just take it to three for instance save it and f5 and you see now i have gotten the first three elements i always have to in certain index so basically what i'm well that's why i did the three because you start with zero one two you have to put three because three is never included so if i need the first three elements i'd have to add an index more see so so and that's how i get a range of um out of that list right um a list is editable it is changeable or in other words it is mutable which means I can change elements in my list. So for instance, if I change, let's say my first list and element zero is now equal to uh, 1156.48. I change that and if I run the code again, then uh, Oh, I just misspelled that. So and if I run that, then you see now I have 1156.48 as my first element versus the 123 from previously. So you can edit lists, you can change them. That's why they're mutable. Apart from changing existing elements, you can also add to your list. So, so basically, um, my first list 
my first list and then use that method append and then I'll append the new number which is uh, 523 and save it and if I just print let's remove that so it's just to print the whole list and if I print now uh, XYZ then you can see my list got extended by that element 523 um, I can also extend the list or append a whole list to my first list so let's say I append my second list to my first list what happens here let's check it out and you see now what I, what happens is that I created a so-called nested list I have my initial list and it got extended by this second list and we have here a list within a list and how do I call elements like this so how do I get for instance this 115.56 well uh, let's look at this list what what element is First of all, what element is this list, this inner list? Well, this is that element 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we're at element 6. And where is the 115.56? Where is an element 6? Well, it is 0, 1, 2, 3. So 3. So you have here with nested list, it's the same as with normal list. You just use double indexes. One is for the, for the outer list. Where are you in the outer list? And then the second index is basically where are you in the inner list? And if you have further nesting, obviously you would get more indices. So let's try it out if it works. And we have here the 115.56, right? Now with the append, as you see with the method append, I just added, I just took the whole complete second list and it got added as a further element in my first list. If I need to add the discrete elements to my first list, I need to use the word extent. And then you would see that my first list now contains all of, um, all of the second list elements discrete elements I don't have the, I don't have the whole list well, I don't have the whole second list appended to my first list but rather the, the discrete elements and if I just print that out um, you can see now the discrete elements I don't have this list nesting anymore right uh, another way to 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 extend this or basically create a new list you can create a new list basically let's say uh, third list that is equal to my first list uh, plus oops uh, plus my second list and um, if I print third list uh, then you can see I've the, I've the same basically the same result as before. The only difference is that here, my first list got extended, whereas here I just created a new, a new variable, a new list, which contains basically the summation of the other two lists. So, um, so now um, adding or extending is no problem. How do I remove items? Well, to remove items, there are two, two things. Well, first of all, let's... Um, Let's say my first list. You can use the pop function, and this requires an index. For instance, if I need to remove the 547, then I need to go 0, 1, 2, 3. So pop index or element number 3. And um, let's go and print XYZ again. And if I if I if I print that then you see that this uh, 547 is no more in there because I just removed it. Another way of, of using remove is basically uh, the word, the function remove. And now here you don't give the index of what you need to remove, but rather the, um, the item itself. Let's go for my second list in this case. 
and let's remove the ABC. Now, what I don't like, that's why I prefer, I prefer, I personally prefer the method, the, the pop function, because there you specify exactly which index gets removed. With the function remove, um, it is not very clear. I mean, it, it removes the first occurrence of that, but often if you have very long lists and you remove an element, it's very difficult to see where is the first occurrence of the element. Whereas with pop, you have to specify the index. So if I say remove ABC uh, of my second list, and let's make that second list. Save and F5. So you see now I just have one ABC. The first ABC got removed. Right. So these are the two ways of, uh, of doing that. I can also use to, to, to clear the whole list. I just use the function clear and that clears the whole second list and now this is an empty list and uh, again if you need to to create a new list for instance uh, fourth list then I would have that's how I create an empty list and then obviously I can use append uh, to um, you know add new elements to that list uh, other than append clear and pop and so on there are more functions to list for instance one is length so if I need to know the length how many elements are in my first list I use the function length len and len and basically my first list save that and if i print that then you see my my first list has 10 elements well because we extended my first list we extended that with uh the second list so we have one two three four five six and the four elements of my second list right um now if there are other functions for instance max and min and max if i go max now max only works if your list is of the same type now because i extended my first list with my second list uh, i'm going to get an error here because through this extension my list has become mixed my first list has become mixed because it's got these strings and you can see if i run that code um, uh, oops, i gotta save it and if i run that code then I get this error because I'm mixing strings with numbers. So if uh, I just, let me just comment this stuff out uh, or just delete it. And now you see, I this now should run because now my first list is just pure numbers and I'm getting the max, the max value out of it. And that would be the 1102. Uh, ditto for min also requires a list of one type and in this case it gives you the smallest value in the list and now we come to um, to the most uh, to the most important thing or the biggest thing that I find uh, where lists are very advantageous is basically looping through them or iterating through them and there are two ways of iterating through a list. Let me remove that stuff. So one way of iterating through a list is you can go for a in my first list. And then you can say print a. And if you run that code, then you would have all elements in that first list. Another way of, of iterating or looping through a list, which I which I prefer, is for using indices for i in. Now, if I'm going to use an index, then I've got to take a range, and that range is the length of my first list. And that closes length, that closes range. And then it'll go print uh, my first list. and then the index i so both would give the same result let me just put a print between them so you can see the difference 
basically the lack of any difference and if I run that you see it's exactly the same thing uh, the only difference is that here I'm saying for each element in my or for a as as a, as a placeholder for elements in my first list print this element and here I'm saying for I as a placeholder for an index in a range of indices which go from zero to whatever length my first list is print my first list and its index so both give out the same I I mean it could be just that it's my only my personal experience but I always I found that using this method is much more useful in real life code than this one I, I hardly use this one but like I said it's maybe just my experience the same thing like what I said previously with the pop method I prefer the pop method because you can specify the index whereas with remove yeah sure it removes the first element but often you can't see which one is the first element so yeah it, it makes things difficult but obviously uh, remove is there for a purpose and you know uh, probably some people use remove more than pop and same thing here probably some people use this more than this it's just a personal preference and personal experience and depends on how you code and what kind of code you are facing um this basically covers everything there is to lists and uh, I think these are the most important elements that you need when working with lists. Obviously, there's much more, but uh, these are the most important, the most used elements and the ones I use on a daily basis.